Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus, which are contained in the Gospels. And this week, the parable of the ten virgins, found in the Gospel of Matthew. There's no doubt why only Matthew uses this parable in his Gospel, which was written for the Jews. Let's take a look and see why. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like to ten virgins, who, taking their lamps, went out to meet the bridegroom and the bride. Matthew 25, 1. Virgins are young women who've never had sex before, but understanding why these particular virgins were outside, and why they had lamps and were waiting for a bridegroom, requires knowing about the ancient Jewish marriage customs, which very few Christians nowadays know about. I'll try to cover this topic as fast as possible. In ancient Jewish culture, most marriages were arranged. The two would be betrothed to one another, which basically meant that they actually were married, but they wouldn't live together right away. Instead, there would be a period of time where neither one would be involved with anyone else, sometimes as long as two whole years, though it was usually only about one, during which time the groom would be expected to set a bridal chamber up in the house of his father, and the bride to wear a veil and remain faithful. The bridegroom would go to the bride's house to pick her up when he was done and announce his arrival with either a horn or a shout. The bride's unmarried friends were expected to be part of the procession back to the bridegroom's house, meaning that both she and they had to have lamps so the procession could see where they were going. The marriage would be consummated in the bridal chambers at the bridegroom's father's house, then there would be a week's worth of celebrating and feasting. There's more involved in the ceremony, but this is as much as we need to know to understand the context of this parable. And five of them were foolish, and five wise. But the five foolish, having taken their lamps, did not take oil with them. Matthew 25, 2-3 Oil lamps were very common in the ancient world, especially in places where flammable oil could be produced from the local crops. Israel is one such place, growing olives that contained oil, which could be extracted by crushing the olives to remove the pits, pressing the olive pulp in woven bags or baskets to get the juice out, pouring hot water over them to wash out the remaining oil. Then the olive juice would be left to sit until the oil rose to the top. After that, it was just a matter of scooping off the top layer and putting it in a flask. Voila, olive oil. Olive oil was widely used in lamps of the time period, since it could be burned for a long time without running out, though, like candles and light bulbs, it did run out eventually. That's why it was usually best to bring some extra oil if you were going to need to use your lamp for a long time. The fact that five of these virgins didn't bring any extra oil with them does seem to show that they weren't preparing wisely. But the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamps, and the bridegroom tarrying, they all slumbered and slept. Matthew 25, 4-5 Everyone has to sleep eventually, and whoever these particular virgins were, they would have had to either light or refill their lamps after waking up. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh! Go ye forth to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Matthew 25, 6-7 The bridegroom comes at midnight, and the virgins all go to trim their lamps. Lamps, you see, work by lighting a wick that's sitting in the oil, with the end of the wick just slightly above the level of the oil. The oil is burned by the fire as the wick shrinks. However, sometimes a wick's tip will be all burned up, and part of it will have to be cut off so that it can light again. The oil is often refilled when this is done, which is why the foolish virgins suddenly realize they're out of oil. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. The wise answered, saying, Lest perhaps there be not enough for us and for you, go you rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. Matthew 25, 8-9 Look, we might not have enough for all ten of us. Just go and get some for yourselves from the oil merchant. It's midnight, but I'm sure he'll sell to you if you're persistent. Some people ask why the wise virgins didn't share, but the truth is that sharing isn't always the best choice. They're planning ahead, as they did before, and the night is only half over. If the bridegroom gets sidetracked on his way, their flasks of oil might need to last them the rest of the night. They're pretty confident they will, but they might not have enough to help another five lamps do the same thing. Also, giving good things to others isn't always best for them. It's human nature that when you get something without having to work for it, you tend to have a lot less respect for its value. And maybe the foolish virgins would waste some of their oil or not plan ahead properly just like they didn't before. 
You can't always save someone from their own faults, but you can plan ahead for your own future, while also trying to help others as best you can without endangering yourself. Under the circumstances, it was the foolish version's lack of foresight that proved to be their undoing. It's not the wise version's fault. Now, whilst they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Matthew 25.10 it's also worth noting that the five foolish virgins could have just hung around with the wise virgins until he showed up. I think it would have made them look pretty silly not having lit lamps for the procession, but at least they would have gotten in the front door and been able to have fun at the feast. However, again, they didn't plan that far ahead, and as a result, they ended up being left out. But at last come also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answering said, Amen, I say to you, I know you not. Matthew 25, 11 to 12. I think based on this verse that we can safely say these women weren't brides themselves. They were probably the unmarried friends of the bride who were supposed to have been part of the procession. But while the bride might have recognized them, there's no realistic way the bridegroom could be expected to. They didn't meet him when they had the chance, so they end up being treated as the strangers they are. Watch ye therefore, because you know not the day nor the hour. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. The lamps in this parable seem to represent the grace of God, specifically sanctifying grace, which allows us to enter heaven. But if they represented virtue, good deeds, our relationship with God, or even the Holy Spirit himself, the parable would make just as much sense. It's not really that hard to keep up our relationship with God or to seek the sacraments and we need to be forgiven, but we sometimes need to plan ahead to keep our relationship with God strong and make preparations, even reducing temptations in our lives to guard ourselves from evil. Even seeking legitimate means of temporary satisfaction instead of trying to achieve satisfaction through stealing and other sins can be a means of driving off evil from our lives, and it's something we can do by planning ahead. The foolish versions are those who don't plan for their futures, and they have to deal with the consequences of that. In any case, while I think most people can understand the meaning of this parable after a fashion, it's so steeped in what today would be esoteric Jewish customs that most non-ancient Jewish people just can't understand it the way it was written, and there aren't any verses to explain any of this wedding ceremony stuff, so it's no wonder a parable like this depending on inside knowledge of the Jewish culture of the time, wasn't included in, say, the Gospel of Mark, which was mainly written to be read and understood by the Romans. Next, the Great Banquet. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.